What did you make of that this evening? And congratulations, first of all, on getting the point that you needed to secure Europa League football. Yes, it uh, was uh, very tough. Uh, but we knew to play against the city is uh, always tough. Uh, and uh, I think uh, we played very well. We deserve to, to, to make a point. And we deserve to play in Europa League. What did you like about your team's performance tonight against the champions? The courage. And How did they show their courage? But, uh, to defend man to man, to play the ball in every situation. When the situation was difficult, uh, we didn't lose our style. To, to press Man, man City man to man in every side of, on the pitch, uh, I think it's courage. What about the goal? The goal of Julio yeah. was incredible. But Julio has a big, big potential. But I want he he play better. I want he play for uh, he plays for the team, and I think he can improve. But he stays with us. Uh, I think uh, for sure he can improve. When you came here, Roberto, and you met this group of players and you saw them training for the first time, did you think that finishing sixth was possible? No, but uh, I didn't think I didn't uh, uh, I didn't think about the, the the goal, the target, the the table. No, I I wanted to I, I wanted to to work and to analyze the team, analyze the players, to understand the new country, the new the new league, because it's totally different than uh, Serie A or than another. Uh, uh, European competition and then in February I, I started to, to think uh, uh, the table, the, the result, the final result, the, the goal. Roberto, what do you love about this league, the Premier League? You just seem to have fitted in so perfectly with your style. Uh, the Premier League is fantastic uh, competition, uh, the atmosphere uh, the atmosphere is fantastic in every stadium, in every, in every game. Um, there isn't uh, too much uh, uh, tactical, um, but tactical, uh, I mean, uh, um, the, the, you play the games against team with courage, no? And uh, you fight to win the game, not to, to defend and to counter-attack, no? Mm. It's different mentality about this, and uh, but sincerely, I have I have to say I'm lucky because I found one group of players fantastic. Because um, I think uh, I am a normal coach, a good coach, but uh, without players, uh, I think I, I think couldn't. Pep was very complimentary <laughs> about you. Yes, yes, but um, I start in every uh, when. When I have to analyze uh, something in football, I always start to the player, the quality of the players, mm -hmm. the quality of the players like in, in terms of football and uh, human. No? Yeah. He, <coughs> he talked about you as being one of the most influential coaches we have ever seen in the Premier League. This is what Pep Guardiola said. That's quite something. <laughs> I, I, I became coach for him because yeah. uh, yes, I don't know if uh, it's per merit or, or una colpa. If, if I don't know if it's like a merit or something not good. But uh, I became coach for him because I I loved his Barcelona. I studied him a lot. I don't love to, to copy no one and, come in, come in. and I didn't copy. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I took uh, yeah. when I started to, to be a coach. Before also, when I finished uh, to play, to, to be a, a player. And um, Pep uh, is still number one. Don't leave us, Roberto. 
I'm just going to introduce our, our guest here, Tony Bloom, the owner of Brighton, the man responsible for the stadium, the development, everything. This seems like a very nice relationship. First of all, you, Roberto, talk to me about working for this man. But I have to, to say thanks because uh, uh, there were, I think, two situations, uh, two difficult situations. Uh, I don't want to explain what situation, but I, I had the two situations, two strong situations inside the dressing room and uh, I decided in my way and um, Tony never uh, said me nothing. Uh, and for me, I love, uh, I love the, the, libertà, the freedom, no? And for, for that, I have to say thanks. Tony, now you, your turn. Congratulations, first of all. But, but tell us about the man that has helped you deliver Europa League football for Brighton for the first time. Well, first of all, you know, the season started off really well. And then we got the phone call and Graham left soon after. And it was a difficult situation for the club. You, you know, we're always prepared with potential future head coaches, but you never know, particularly in the early part of a season, middle of a season, what may, uh, what may uh, come when we hire a new head coach. So fortunately, we hired the perfect man for the job, Mr. Robert, Roberto De Zerbi, and he's come in, been a breath of fresh air. The players play for him so magnificently. His motivational skills, tactical skills, um, and getting improvements out of our players have been absolutely superb. So we're delighted. It's an am amazing achievement for Roberto, his staff, and of course all of our players. Is it also the best football you've ever seen here? Uh, yeah, uh, unbelievable. I mean, we've matched the best team in the world. I think we've played better than them. It's an amazing advert for the Premier League. Two brilliant teams playing. And uh, yeah, it's just so amazing for our fans, for the city of Brighton and Hove. Have you told the boss how many players you need for next season? Of course, <laughs> I, uh, we, we, we are speaking because I think uh, <clears throat> next year uh, will be more difficult, the Premier League. Uh, and to play for competition in our way, because we would like to compete. If we play, we, we want to win, no? We have to analyse uh, very well the squad and uh, the improvement that we have to do. Are you ready for that, Tony? We're, we've been, we are getting prepared. We've been working hard for the last few weeks on, uh, on our squad and we will continue to do that over the next two or three months. I, I, I want to show you the scenes in the dressing room right now because we have a camera in the dressing room. I don't know if you're aware of this, Roberto, this evening, a little bit earlier as well. Um, this, <laughs> I think you're in the middle, Roberto. Crazy like a coach, eh? <laughs> Why is this important to celebrate like this? But, um, I love uh, to work in tactical disposition, in a style of play. I love uh, to speak about the quality of players, but without this you can't play and you can't win nothing. It's quite exhausting watching him sometimes, isn't it? It really is. He doesn't stop when we, what, we see him on the touchline. But he loves it. That's the way he is. You, you've got to always be yourself and he gets the best out of the players. And so you can't ask for more than that. Before we let you go, Tony, Brighton fans know what you've done here. It, it's, this man has done an incredible job, but it's not just about that. It's, it's the final bit in the jigsaw, which started a long time ago, back at the Goldstone and the with Dean and, and then to here. How proud are you of what has been achieved? I'm exceptionally proud. I mean, we've come a very long way when I took over the club. You know, we'd almost got relegated to League Two. So we've come a long way together with the, with the fans, of course, but with all the staff. Some of our staff have been with us for a very long time. A lot of our players who got us through out of League One and out of the Championship, they were a really significant part of what this football club has achieved. Like Liam. And absolutely, like <laughs> Liam. And so, yeah, I'm really proud of everyone. It's a very it's a historic moment for our football club. It's a brilliant night. It's, it's been an incredible season. The story will continue. Tony, thank you so much for joining thank us. You. Roberto, thank you so thank much you. as well. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank luck. you to you as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations. It is a, a very interesting marriage, isn't it? Roberto De Zerbi and, and yeah. Tony Bloom, and it is working. Two very smart individuals 
who are making this dream come true for Brighton fans. And you just wonder, like David Weir said, what is the ceiling for this football club with these two at the helm?